Hi everyone, Jalapeno Gal back with another video. I recently did a video on the different mediums and uh, like fine liners and pastels and things like that that I use when I color. So you can go check that out. But I touched a little bit at the end on chalk pastels. And a lady asked me to show how I shave them. And I use Master Touch pastels. There are some higher quality ones out there that, you know, honestly, I can't tell you if they're better or not because I've never used them, but a lot of people do use them. These work fine for me, and I'm a beginner. They're $25 at Hobby Lobby, and I want to say I paid about $15 with a coupon, and these are actually the long sticks. They're not short half sticks that you see. Lots of pretty colors, and I love pretty colors. So, as you can see... A lot of the sticks come in half sticks like this. If you're going to shave it, you, you really want a longer stick because you don't want to cut yourself and you want something to hold on to. So I do recommend these. Or, you know, if you get a different brand, I recommend long sticks, not half sticks. So let's get on with it. I use these little containers for paint to keep the shavings in when I'm done and I like to do it this way because I don't want to have to pull out my chalk sticks every single time I want to do a background especially if it's something small something simple I'm going to try to show you the one that I did recently Let's see if I can get it on there you can see how the pink and blue is behind it that's chalk pastels and it gives it that really pretty, you know, faint, elegant look, I think. So, let me just... And there's ladies out there that can do some things that just blow even my mind. That uh, if you, I mean, you can search their videos. It's amazing. This is my little chalk kit. I keep all those little containers in here with these pom-poms. And this bag is tiny, tiny pom-poms for 99 cents. The other bag was the bigger pom-poms. I'll show you the difference for like a dollar ninety nine at Michael's, I think. Now, I, a lot of people use cotton balls. I I prefer these because they don't shred and fall apart like a cotton ball does after you start smearing it around. So I hold on to these, and I use needle nose pliers when I do it, so I don't get it all over my hands. And I hold it like that and dip it in and smudge it around. Now you're probably wondering why is there makeup in your case? Yes, you can use eyeshadow for backgrounds. I know many, many women that go to the Dollar Tree or Big Lots or even Walmart and they get those big, cheap things of makeup, like a dollar a piece, two dollars a piece that, you know, colors from the 80s that we would never wear today. Uh, colors like that that they want you to wear on your eyes, you know, no, that's okay. But they do work for backgrounds and it's a cheap method. So if you want to check it out, you can check that out. Oh, I need my little blade. So this is probably the easiest thing you're ever going to do. You take your box knife. You take your stick on a folded piece of paper. Because what you're going to do is shave it off onto the piece of paper. And then you're going to pick it up like that. And you're going to dump it in your cup. Folding that makes this much easier and faster. So it's just as simple as that. You just rub that blade along the side of your stick and you rotate it so that you can keep your stick pretty even you don't want to have it all skinny on one side because it'll break I'm going to keep that shaved pretty evenly and then like when you start getting down on this side you flip that stick over and just shave that side too like that don't want to dig into it you just it doesn't take very much pressure because if you dig you'll start getting nicks and then it'll come out in chunks so after you do that then you're going to take your little cup you're going to fold your paper up and then dump it in and there you go simple as that I was going to show you how to do another one, but I think that's fine, and I don't want this video to be that long, so I'm going to move on and just show you a little bit of how I blend. Again, I'm not an expert, so this is one of those things that you just have to do and practice by yourself. 
and like I said, watch videos, learn people's techniques, and then just figure out how you want to do your own thing. Um, I highly encourage people to be creative and and explore your talents. You're, you're never going to get anything done or, you know, you're never going to grow if you don't try new things. So, you know, get out there, try it. What can it hurt? So you take your little cup, take your ball, dip it in. If you feel like that's too much, then you can just go like that and tap it off. And then you come on your paper and just lightly, you know, do whatever you're going to do. If you're going to do a sunset, you can do a sunset. You don't have to go in a circle like this. This I'm just showing you for video purposes. Like how I did the pink and blue on that picture I just showed you. Now, if you have a lot of excess, if you find that there's, let's see, I didn't really get too much, but if you find there's a lot of excess, don't smudge it off. Don't rub it off because then it's just going to leave streaks on your paper. You want to either pick the paper up and go like this or use some kind of brush, blush brush or something and brush it off. You don't want to um, rub it with your hand. So let's get some blue here. See if we can accomplish something here see that excess and you can bring it back in you got to be careful because you can smudge it that way too you don't really want to I mean unless you're going for a smudge look then that's okay but that's not what I'm trying to do right here so because if you were to like smudge that in there it, it might not look very pretty the colors can blend. You can definitely do that. Like, uh, what is it? Blue and orange, or excuse me, blue and yellow make green kind of thing. Not hard. Let's see if we can throw some pink off in there. See that stuff I just dumped off is the stuff you don't want to mix back in because that pulled up some of the blue, some of the yellow, and some of the pink. So if you have all three combined and then try to mix it, it's going to look like a smudged mess. It's not going to lay down as a separate color. Let's try for a brighter pink. Let's see what happens. I don't really know if you guys can see that pink on the video. I like the lighter colors myself. I like bright colors too, don't get me wrong. I do. I'm more of a softer kind of gal, I guess. See? And you can do that with any color scheme that you really want to do. Let's see it. I wonder what purple would look like. Don't recommend using the same cotton ball, but or pom pom. But I mean, you can if you haven't really used a lot. But if you have a lot of pigment on there, you don't want to continue continue to use that. Oh, I'm off camera. Sorry about that, guys. Getting to look like Easter on this paper. See? You get a pretty look. So, see, it's not that hard. It's pretty basic, pretty easy. Can't really mess up too bad, I guess. Unless you smudge all the pigments together, like I was talking about. You don't want to do that. So, one more thing that I do want to touch on before we take off on this video is oh two more things actually now whenever you're done with it a lot of people ask how do you keep it from um from the pigment excuse me i'm getting tongue-tied how do you keep it on the paper secured on the paper since it's chalk and powdery and you know whatnot they have this thing called a workable fixative and they also have some that's just a fixative 
and you spray it on your paper just like uh, it's almost like hairspray and the work the difference between a fixative and a workable fixative is that you can color like if you use this one you can go over it and do more to it you can still work with the picture and not have to worry about it messing this up but like if I was to spray this on here right now and wait for it to dry I couldn't go back over this with another color and it blend now if I sprayed the whole paper I could come over here yes and do something like that I could put another color on top but it's not gonna blend like the yellow and the blue and make green you can't do that now um, the just the plain fixative you can't work over it once it's on it's on it's like a I'm not gonna say a coat of plastic but you just can't work with it anymore um, I highly suggest that especially for color pencils as well to keep the transfer um, from going on a different pit like with my Alice in Wonderland book here you can see I have I haven't put any fixative on it yet so I have a piece of paper in between each page because if I didn't then my pigment from my Prismacolors would end up being on this side of the paper. It would transfer. So I keep it protected with a sheet of paper until I can get that fixative on it. So that's definitely a plus. Whether you're working with color pencils, pastel chalks, paints, whatever, you need to get some of this. Get it today. It's like $5 at Walmart. Uh, oh, something else that she asked about as well is my boxes that I keep all this stuff in, where I got them and what they're called. Now, this is a line of stackable boxes that I get from Michaels, and they're over there, at my Michaels, they're over by like the dollhouse furniture, and the spray paint, and the acrylic paints and things, and it's called Createology, and they're really neat boxes, really nifty, I love them. Uh, Let's see, I'm trying to get you on camera here. They stack, so they're really fun. Now this bigger one on the bottom cost, I think, $8. This one cost $6, and this little one cost $3. Now, I just got my big ones, so this one's empty, but as you can see, it locks on the end, and this tray lifts out. So you don't have to use the tray if you want. You can just use the box, or you can mix and match the trays. that They're interchangeable, so it's not, you know, that big a deal. Um... Let's see, and then take this off and show you my bigger one. Like I said, the trays are interchangeable. This one's much deeper, so I can put more in it. And I use um, I use one side for my shavings. I know, bad girl, but I, I do. I don't like to get up and empty, you know, whatever. Anyway, so my pencils, when I'm coloring a page, I don't like to put all my pencils that I'm using on that page back in their containers and then have to try to figure out what color I use later. So I just put them all in here until I'm actually done with that drawing. And then under the bottom is where I store my fine liners. Uh, there's plenty of room. My jelly rolls, my gel pens that I buy open stock. I stick them all in here. My blender pencils, all that good stuff. Um, $8 for the big one. Six or seven dollars for the medium one and three dollars for the tiny one and they're very sturdy Createology if you're wanting to get them on Amazon I'll put some links down in the description box for you guys um, on Amazon in case you don't have a Michaels in your area So check that out check out some of my other videos I, I have quite a few that you know show some coloring techniques show different mediums things that I use um, You know again, I'm no expert, but check them out. I mean, you might like them. You might learn something. Get out there and try and get working on those backgrounds, folks. Talk to you later. Subscribe.